at the center portion of it. Well, it looks terrible. It's filled with holes. It is. It's dangerous. And it shows a level of responsibility and concern about the safety of the residents that will eventually work in our favor. We just have to wait them out. They're not taking very good care of it. And I think that's something every, every time someone goes into that lot, they see it. It's plainly there. Eventually, residents will tire of that. And that's when our opportunity may come. But right now, the village controls it, and they're content with it. So we have to wait. I mean, I, I, I think, I, I don't think we've taken an opportunity. I don't mean to belabor the point. Um, but um, everything looks wonderful, except for the parking lot. So I don't, I don't know if I can, if we can continue the on the rest. Been broken, the costs have been broken down, so that could be excluded when it goes out to bid. Right. OK, good. Oh, I, sure. Yeah. So I'd like, everything has been broken down into segments. So. I'd like to have, I mean, just personally, and I don't mm -hmm. want to slow things down, but I'd, I'd like to table the decision on the trees in the parking lot, and, and happy to talk about it tonight, but um, there's so much good news here, I don't mean to just, you know, talk no, about the, 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 the more reasonable thing, based on what you're saying, what we've been discussing, maybe, Jody, if you can come back to us at some point with some other kind of planting that would, you know, it would have to be something that wouldn't be as permanent as a tree. Obviously, we would, we would also know that it will probably get trampled to some extent. So is there something that's kind of durable that would kind of hold its own but wouldn't be, again, sure. as permanent as sure, a Sure, I can address that. So as yeah. far as the, the, the plantings that are shown in here, it's a layered planting. So the trees you picked up on, um, beneath that would be low ground cover type shrubs that can handle salt that gets uh, thrown on the parking lot. So those would be things that you've seen probably in many other parking lots, Gorilla Sumac. And so if, if the library <laughs> wanted to move forward with just the ground cover and hold off on the trees, you know, honestly, that's probably one of the least expensive <laughs> components of the entire plant Darn because it. It, doesn't require, <laughs> it doesn't require any structural change. I mean, we're not changing curbs around, we're not sure. changing pavement, we're really just you know, putting in fresh soil and, and adding plantings. So would you have little stones going or just mulch? I think we would probably just want to leave this mulch. Again, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to suggest that it's a walkway because it's not a true mm -hmm. ADA compliant <laughs> walkway. Right. It's just a it's sort of a break in the plan. <coughs> right. Yeah. We also may, want, may be able to run a concession for canes <laughs> for people <laughs> who need them in order to navigate that. Well, really, it's not its not safe for anyone in that right. kind of situation. Right. I mean, also, not just the passage, but you're getting right into the parking lot, right. too. Right. I mean, Traffic. I mean, what, what Jody was saying, too, is that we don't really want to encourage people to use it if they have mobility issues. Right. Really, mm -hmm. they should be using a, a wider sidewalk. It's safer. Right, and the place to, yeah. you know, the place to be walking through, I mean, you know, I'm probably like most of you, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But, you know, had said that, you know, there there is an accessible walkway here that yeah. we, right. they should be guided to. Well, yep. those of us who are a little more mobility deprived can't take some of those choices. But I see plenty of people who shouldn't mm -hmm. do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, my last point I've done, uh, and I, this is, looks awesome, and I appreciate all the committee's work, but I, I do think we should formally uh, convey to the village you know, our open interest that we'd prefer to take this interim step, because I think the opportunity may be here now. I think you're absolutely right. The condition is horrible. And because we've got this extraordinary plan, I think we should formally convey to the village, look, we'd, we'd prefer to fix this all up together. And if they reject us, they reject us. But that, that'd be my suggestion as part they of They will process. come under increasing pr pressure. The better our side looks, well, they're not improving anything. Yeah. And, okay. and, and, and you're already doing that. I mean, right. your parking lot looks wonderful. And that, yeah, and that discussion we can have after Jody for yeah, yeah. your presentation. Yeah. Right yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, cool. so, yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, thank you, though. I'll keep going. So, um, so, you know, I think we landed on the open lawn. Just to let you know, there, um, there, we did inventory of the existing trees. So all the existing trees are shown here sort of in an outline, and all of the proposed new trees are shown here with a green infill. So when you say X oak tree, X linden, what does the X mean? Existing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
Then the other question is, I saw that furniture on the side, the little chairs and the little thing. Are you? Is there a way to secure that? Because I know when you go in New York, they secure all those chairs when you go down around Macy's. So, but they have them all sitting out in the thing, but they're oh, secure. Right, right. right. So there's a couple different types of seats. <laughs> Actually, maybe I should probably I should get to the um, photographs. So the few different types of seating that we have are uh, the sculptural seating here. Um, some of the linear benches, and, and they are backless and have backs, mm. so there's a mixture. And then there's the movable tables and chairs. And so there's a handful of these. Um, the intent is, is, first of all, they, they're very lightweight, and they fold up, and they can be stored away. Um, but the intent <coughs> is that they don't get secured. The intent is to let people make their own space. Mm -hmm. And when people make their own space, <coughs> their, their tendency is to linger a little bit longer. Mm. Um, we've done a lot of research on, on this, and um, we found in our research, at least, that on campuses and other downtown environments, including New York, that um, when they leave them out and people move them around, they tend to respect them. There is sometimes a, you know, a, a, I think we found a 10 to 15 percent ish loss rate, but that those campuses and downtown environments that have used those found that that was worth the value of um, of replacing the few of them every so often. So. That was that was the intent of the movable table chairs. And how high do you have some high benches? Because if you've got knee or hip replacement, these are all just standard, you know, okay. like this size. Yeah, maybe from this angle it looks like they could be taller, but no, they're just intended to be um, your typical. You know, That's eight where inches. the cane concession comes. <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the seat cushion. The um, and, and Jody pointed out at, at the landscape. The last. <laughs> At the last landscaping meeting, Jody pointed out that they, in one of the places that they have tested the concept of these chairs, is in Evanston's. You know, mm -hmm. so very you know, a suburb in proximity to us, and, and obviously a place that's got higher volume than we would likely have. So it, again, it, to have the flexibility versus losing a few chairs, if we were to even lose those chairs, seems to be a, a worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. There was a question <coughs> by a member of the committee about the benches. <coughs> Excuse me, being comfortable and. I don't know. I mean, they don't look comfortable to me, but... These ones? Yeah, I so think those are the ones she the was ones talking about. The ones with the backs would be more comfortable, and so the intent was to um, have... Backs? I'm not sure. So the intent younger. was to have the benches with backs in some key locations, so these ones would have backs, these ones would have backs here. Right. I guess my concern is that if you have a bench that's like this, and then you have a back that's like this, mm -hmm. you can't be comfortable because it's just, you know, there's a straight here and a straight here. I can't sit in something like that, for instance, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to find, you know, a comfortable space and it, it doesn't give. So I don't know um, how I feel about those right now. But anyway, that's just a concern to keep in mind. <clears throat> okay, we'll keep, I'm going to keep going, and, but uh, keep interrupting. So the, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of, you know, review, the, we looked at the photos of the materials. The linear benches are, are shown in these spots. These colorful ones are the movable tables and chairs. And then these little blobs are representative of that sculptural pebble-style seating. Jody, could I ask you a question before? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. In the little area where the reading area is now with the two benches when you come yeah. in from the parking lot, are those benches going to be taken out and replaced with something else? Because I looked at, I didn't realize that those are memorial benches and the books down under obviously had something to do with the purchase. Mm. So I think we have to be a little careful there. Most of what's out there is memorial. Uh, don't remember that on the, Honestly, on the benches, you know, like last year, um, but I just happened to notice it this time. So yeah, I think I think that we documented those when we when we did our okay. donor documenting. But, but then we budgeted for these to be new benches with backs. But I think it's something that is worth discussing. You know, I think from you know, our perspective, we wanted to try and um, uh, uh, budget for what would be sort of a unified appearance mm -hmm. because there are. <coughs> things going on mm -hmm. out there, but we wanted to make it look like a unified campus, but it's certainly up to the to the library board. Yeah, I think that that would be something we'd need to... Well, well right. one of those things that she had said was they've decided is to run it by everybody and reach out the staff to everybody that there is a memorial to. Mm -hmm. 
and then in an yeah. ideal world, bring it all internal so that it's not subject right. to the elements. Right. And, yeah. mm-hmm. Including the friends. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the friends would certainly be a significant part of the exactly. memorial piece because yeah. they've donated so much mm-hmm. across the I just the board. wondered how new yeah. they, that donation was. Oh. And it, not that that's going to matter. We've already done that with those benches. We've talked to the friends. Have you? Oh, okay. And then the, I'll just follow up with the very last um, type of seating in here is that uh, I'll show you a rendering in a moment, but this is a curved planter wall with a monument sign opportunity, and the back side of it is, a, again, a curved bench mm-hmm. with back. So <coughs> lots of opportunities for seating up here. We really do want this to feel comfortable, but we're pushing all of the seating out to the edges. We're buffering it with some low planting so that you don't feel like you've got the elements of the street too much in, in your way. And then, um, you know, giving this nice big open lawn, um, for one thing, you've got geothermal running underground, so you don't want to put anything there, but it also mm-hmm. provides spaces for people to come and enjoy the music events. Just a, your, those uh, movable benches, it reminds me of those, like, Times Square things where they sort of take yeah. over part of the street. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know whether that makes any sense to think about for Walnut Avenue, but did, you, did anybody look at that or think about, like, to is do something like, in the street? Like, aren't there, like, a couple of parking spots or, I mean, is, I, I don't know whether it makes any sense at all, but I just know in New York they sort of use those movable things, what do they call them, little parklets? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they sort of extended out the property and, like, squeezed auto traffic, so it's a more inviting pedestrian. Mm-hmm. I think they, they do. New York has areas. a pretty substantial parklet mm-hmm. program and a yeah, mini park, plaza yeah. program. Park. I will say that those things work best when the surrounding land uses and the traffic patterns support it. Um, there's so much great opportunity to do that in here that the group didn't feel that um, there was a need to move beyond there. Yeah. This is a pretty busy street, I and mean, this gets you to the highway, so it's. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know how comfortable you've got it would buses, feel. you've got parking. You got a bus stop. Where you can squeeze yeah. it along there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just to finish up, mm-hmm. and then I'll show you some other um, renderings, but. This area along Wilmette Avenue today is is a pretty tired looking space and um, the group felt it was underutilized. We uh, probably spent the most time discussing that space um, and the levels of how um, active or passive it wanted to be. Uh, In the end, the group came to a more passive type of an approach, but really the, the shining light of this whole space is the butterfly garden and this desire to not just sort of walk next to the butterfly garden with, you know, plantings that you might see just an edge of, but to try and walk in between the butterfly garden so you can get plantings on both sides of you. So that's what, in that plus, there is a, um, the garden committee that maintains this little planter in here. So we wanted to give them access so they didn't have to, you know, walk through you know, the, the mud to get to it. So uh, while there is a sidewalk here along Wilmette, there's also a parkway area. This provides a secondary garden path that gets you access to that landscape wall and then connects you back out to the sidewalk with some opportunities for interpretive signage, uh, landscape plantings, the butterfly type planting. And it's handicap accessible? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, we're familiar with your existing one. So this would be a four foot wide um, bluestone path and it, it would be um, installed level and clean so that it would be handicap accessible. Cool. There would be a, a modest little sort of um, small plaza space here where you can have a, a space to rest, to sit, to look at some interpretive signage, let you kind of come on through and then and then back out. The balance of this area, you've got two really great linden trees, um, and beyond that, it's, it's just cleaning up the plantings up against the building, keeping it really low, very clean up against Wilmette Ave. Um, and then the last thing, just working our way around here, is along the alley, there are some um, overgrown hawthorn trees that have thorns, so they're pretty dangerous. Um, but the intent was to remove those and replace them with some low uh, shrub type plantings. Again, salt tolerant because we've got a pretty harsh environment in the alley. Um, the group had some great ideas about potentials for murals, but that would be something that could happen at a later date. But um, that uh, that sort of takes us throughout the entire area. Um, could I show you some other renderings, or did you guys have any Can I, questions? Yeah, I do here? have a question. Yeah. Um, the um, recycling bins and the garbage bins. Yeah. <coughs> are you planning to do one of each, or are you planning to do the the double ones? Exactly. Yeah. So, uh-huh. um, the we already discussed. 
some of uh, the receptacles that the group uh, settled on after looking at a few different products and materials and receptacle like this, they would be two separate bins. One would be clearly marked for cycling and one would be for trash. And would they be next to each other? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And would there be uh, those bins at the front of the building where you go in? I, think that, um, I didn't notice that, that that was on the plan. So There's I some right in the front, right? Are the they? Blue ones, yeah. Okay. Right I by the bicycle. Right by the bicycle. No, rack. I meant by the front. Right, door. right. Uh, they're, they're, they're now there. Where they are. I think that yeah. we had, you know, and, you know, again, this is a concept, so mm -hmm. we can always mm -hmm. right. add or mm -hmm. change, right but there. I think that we had um, replaced the existing receptacles that are here in the parkway. Right. And mm -hmm. by the way, we sat down with village staff uh, to make them aware of what was going on with the campus entity plan. So we were able to get some good feedback from them relative to process and permitting and that sort of thing. But also, we're recommending some things within the parkway here. So replacing the bike racks, adding the bike repair station, and replacing the trash and recycling receptacles here. Uh, I think we did reserve another couple for in the plaza area near the front of the building. You guys look at those. Remember we were talking about those funky bike racks that's spelled out WPL? Yeah, there's some bike rack stuff that's in here yeah. as well. We did look at some yeah. artistic mm -hmm. bike racks. I will say um, our group spent a lot of time dreaming big and then figuring out where to rein back in. And yeah. um, 